Hello everyone, this is a new series of videos titled From Good to Excellent Phlebotomy Practice and it is focused on pre-analytical errors in a clinical laboratory and biochemistry in particular. Pre-analytical error is a global problem for many reasons, such as the process consists of many steps, it involves many staff in different levels, doctors, nurses, secretary, phlebotomist, career staff, lab staff, you name it. It also involves digital word, computer, and software. There is a lack of continuous education and lack of feedback and follow-up. Best practice for pre-analytical sample processing include factors that constitute an accurate laboratory results involve more than analytical accuracy and can be summarized as follow. The right sample was collected on the right patient at the right time with appropriate patient preparation. The right technique was used collecting the sample to avoid contamination with intravenous fluids, tissue damage, prolonged venous stasis or hemolysis. The sample was properly transported to the laboratory, stored at the right temperature. Sample processed with the right speed of centrifugation. Now errors in general can classified into two types. Cognitive error, and this due to poor knowledge and judgment. And non-cognitive error, and this due to interruptions in the process that is routine or relatively automatic. Cognitive errors can be fixed by increased training, competency evaluation, and process aids such as checklists, while non-cognitive error can be fixed by process improvement and environment re-engineering to minimize distractions and fatigue. This series of videos fall under increased training. The more you know, the less mistakes can happen. Types of error in a clinical laboratory can be classified into three categories. Pre-analytical errors, and this about 62% of all errors. Some literatures, they go up to 68, and this include physicians and sample collections. Second, analytical errors, mainly related to the analysis process itself, and it's about 15%. Finally, Post-analytical errors, and it's about 23%, and it's related to physician and paper and computer. This series focuses on pre-analytical errors. The list of pre-analytical error is really long, but the good news is about 92% of pre-analytical errors are preventable, as the studies showed. By completing this series of videos, there will be transformation in terms of understanding these 20 types of errors or mistakes, why they happen and how to prevent them. And before we start, I'd like to say to phlebotomist, thank you for your daily good hard work and thanks for all these little notes on the patient's request forms. It's highly appreciated. And remember, your job is very important to us. Patients don't see us in the lab, all they see is your smile, your care, and your professional attitude. So you are the face of the lab, and we are always there for you, anytime, ready to help with any question you have. With saying that, let's start it.